and a half years of transport experience in the ARB library. And when you include that of colleagues, there is also a wider pool of over 60 years of transport knowledge which may be called upon. And I also have special interests in information literacy and knowledge management. Terrific. Thanks, Jill. So just a little bit of housekeeping about today's session. We are recording the session and so we'll send you a copy of the recording as well as the presentation notes uh, via email afterwards. We will run for approximately 45 minutes all up um, and there's plenty of time in there for questions. So webinars do work best when they are interactive so please don't hesitate to send your questions through. Jill would love to help you with uh, anything she can along the way, so feel free to type questions into the uh, chat box and uh, we'll get to them in a couple of question breaks that we have along the way. Um, if you're experiencing any technical issues, uh, use the raise your hand function and I'll uh, attend to those. So Jill, over to you, let's get into it. Okay, thank you Cathy. Uh, now just as a brief matter of introduction, the services provided by the Australian Road Research Board Library are supported by the National Interest Services Program and this is funded by the Australian Road Transport Agencies and the Federal Department of Infrastructure and Regional Development and we thank them very much for their continued support of the program. Now in today's session, we're going to be looking at these two tools, the ARB Knowledge Base and TRID, and to assist you, and this is to assist you in finding pavement or other information relevant for you. And we will see what kind of information is held in each database, we'll tour the elements of the home page, check out browsing and searching and what you can do with the results of a browse or search. And while this is an open session today, we know that there is a range of CPEE students and staff joining us today and I will talk about some access points to the library later in the session. First of all, a brief overview and just before we look move into looking at the knowledge base and TRID in more detail, the screen shows a brief overview of each. The ARB knowledge base is supported, developed and maintained by the ARB group library. Its full text searching capability means it's a very powerful tool. TRID is managed and maintained by the United States Transportation Research Board, the TRB. TRID is complementary to the knowledge base in that it has an international focus and holds much, many more records. Also, its subject matter is much wider. For example, it also includes aviation. However, it doesn't have full text search functionality. And on the screen under the database name, you will see the URL. Of course, you can also type ARB Knowledge Base or TRID into your browser and links will show near the top of the first page. We'll begin by looking at the ARB Knowledge Base. Now, originally, hard copy material held in the library was digitised to make it available electronically. Either ARB owned the copyright or permission was sought and received from the copyright owner to include it in the database. In some instances, the material was provided to us for inclusion. Again, permission was granted to do this and examples of this are the Upper and Ostrode's Bridge Conference series. This digitisation project is ongoing and content is being added regularly. Now this is a screenshot of the home page and the way that the content is organised provides an indication of the depth and range of what is available to you. If you look at the centre of the page at the two arrows marked 1, content is organised in two collections called Conference and Journal and Reports. 
folder names are indicative of the kind of content included, for example, the ARP conferences. And in the same way that you might browse through folders on a network drive, these folders may also be browsed by clicking on a folder to open. The red arrow under the National Interest Services banner at the top of the screen and with the red number two arrow shows the black menu bar with search and browse options on the left and a search text box on the right. This menu bar is on every web page, so you can search or browse from wherever you may be in the database. The green arrow number three on the left, the quick search box, shows only on the home page. However, because the search text box on the upper right is on every web page, you don't have to return to the home page to use this particular quick search box. Anyway, to sum up, you can find, for example, pavement content by either browsing or searching. Browse, that is opening up a folder, is particularly helpful when you want to look at a specific collection. For example, the International Sprayed Ceiling Collection, which is located under the conference and journal folders on the left, and search is best when you're looking for quite specific topic material. This is where the full text searching comes into play. You could enter a single word, perhaps something very obscure, and if that term appeared anywhere at all, including in files, the search result would find it. So I have clicked and opened the International Sprayed Ceiling folder under the Conference and Journal collection. You could click and open this from either the home page or under the Browse collection, Browse menu, on the black menu bar where you see a drop-down menu to select a collection. That's at the top left. A little dialog box under Browse, you may select either Conference and Journal or Reports to Browse. The yellow number one arrow shows you where you may set the View and Sort By drop-down options. View is the number of records per page and Sort By has various choices such as Title, Author, Date. You may also refine your result by entering keywords in the filter box. This is on the top right of the screen with a red circle around it. The title link, which is always the first entry, opens to the full detail of the record. Now, while I have opened a collection folder, these actions to set the view, the sort by and the filter also apply to a search result. I have clicked on a title link and a title link always opens to the detail page of a record. You can see that it includes the file. This is about halfway down the page with a red circle around it. To open or save a file, simply click on the thumbnail image. Now the knowledge base has a number of features you would expect to see in such a platform and there are a number of actions that you can apply, such as print, view, email, download and save, and add to cart. You can see these actions at the top left and the top right, respectively, with the number one. Adding records to the cart is helpful because you can do a number of searches, add to the cart, and return to your selections in the cart later. They will remain there in the cart until you remove them. Now the actions that I've referred to, such as printing, viewing, 
emailing, downloading may also be done from within the card. You do not have to return to a detail page to undertake these actions. You can do these from within the card. Now here's a tip. The file in the record may be too large for your server to accept in, in an email. If this is the case, an email sent from the knowledge base with its file will be rejected. And this can happen reasonably often because these files can be quite large. The yellow number two arrow arrows shows you show you how you can return to the home page. You can click on the National Interest Services banner or you can click on Home which is at the top right. What I have opened here is the home page and a quick search on the home page this is on the left hand side of the screen, the quick search box, or by using the search text box, which you may remember appears on every web page in the database, we'll search across everything in the database and including, as previously mentioned, the full text of files. So the quick search box or the search text box on the black menu bar will search everything in the database. And here as an example, I have entered the keywords pavement technology to search. Case doesn't matter and the double inverted commas will search keywords as a phrase. Now there's a very useful help menu on the left hand side of the screen under the quick search box. Uh, and that is uh, circled with a red circle. And if you click on the help menu, a dialog box will come up with examples of search syntax. And I've pasted some examples of syntax on the right hand side of the screen. So you'll see that the first entry has the phrase search with the double inverted commas around it. The one below that has a star, this will uh, truncate, this is a truncated search and it's very useful when you have, for example, English versus Americans spellings, S versus Z, for example. Uh, the AND will combine terms, the NOT will drop out a term, the OR will search either word and the NEAR will search one word, NEAR another in the square. You have to put that in the square brackets. Here's an example um, of a search result and I have selected some records to display here from my search on pavement technology. Just a tip again, if you receive a nil result, check your keywords for typos. Now in the example here, I've shown the search results side by side, but actually on the results screen, the reports collection will display above conference and journal. That is, the reports records will be in a line down the screen, then the conference and journal records will be aligned, in a line down the screen below reports. It's just for the purposes of this demonstration that I've put them side by side here. Now you may see that uh, on the right hand side of the screen that some of the records have highlighted text. This was the search term entered and here it was part of the title for these two records. However, for these other records to appear in the search result, the term must also have been used elsewhere, for example in the file text. That is the full text searching in operation. Now as per usual, you can filter the search result if you wish and tick the boxes of records which look interesting to you. This box is next to the title and then you can act on these records such as adding to your cart, email, print, view, etc. 
If there are more than 10 records in your search result, scroll down and click on Show All Matching Reports or Show All Matching Conference and Journal. This message, as I said, is at the end of the first 10 records which display and I've shown it here at the bottom of the screen with a red circle around it. Now, you also have the option of an advanced search using field filters. Now, why would you bother to choose this option? Well, remember that the knowledge base uh, searches full text. So by using field, field filters, such as author, you are excluding records from the result that are not relevant to you. For example, perhaps the name may appear in the file and you are looking only for records that the person has authored. Is it is a very specific search because you want it to be very specific and you want your search result to be very targeted. So to perform a search using field filters, select either reports or conference and journal on the black menu bar. And you'll see there there's a drop down under search to select either reports or conference and journal. The field filters will open up. I've only displayed a few on the screen, but there are more than that and I've entered Nalon in the author field and I've received a result of three records which is shown here in the lower part of the screen and you can also see that the author, author's name, which is the term I've entered in the search, is highlighted there in the author field. Okay. Okay, we have a have no, we're all good. Jill. All, all, all good. good. Yeah, carry yeah. on. Okay. Okay. So at this point, I'll say, "How are we travelling?" And if uh, anyone has any questions, terrific. Thank you, Jill. Thanks for running through that. Um, we we don't have any questions right at the minute, so we'll give everyone uh, a few moments to, to type any in if there are any, but I think you've, you've explained everything very thoroughly. Just to, in relation to accessing the, um, the ARB database, is that freely available to, to everyone? Yes, I'm sorry that I didn't mention that earlier. It is a completely free open access database and there is no registration required whatsoever. Okay, so there's no login or... There's password. no login, yep. no registration, no login. You can just enter the URL, undertake a search, click on the link and the database will open up to the home page for you. Terrific. Okay, well we've got a similar question from, from Juan who's from, from Chile. So hello, welcome, thank you for joining us and um, uh, he's asking if it's possible to have access to, to the database. So, so yes, it is available no matter where you are in the world. It is absolutely available no matter where you are in the world. And that's a great question uh, from no, Chile and thanks yes. very much for asking it. Terrific. Okay. Um, that's all we have for the moment. So we'll, um, we'll stop for another questions break uh, in a few moments. So if you do have any questions, um, please don't hesitate to send them through. Just as a reminder, we are recording the session so you can uh, refer back to it uh, down the track. And um, yeah, back to you. Thanks, Jill. Okay. Thanks, Cathy. We'll now move on to uh, have a look at TRID, remembering that you can, uh, if you have any questions about the ARB knowledge base, please uh, feel free to ask them. Don't feel that because we've moved on to TRID that you can't ask those questions. Okay, uh, here is a display of the homepage of TRID and TRID holds over one million records of Australian and international land transport material. It has a much broader subject spread. For example, if you look to the right of the screen in the red circle around subject areas, you will see that the first two entries are administration and management and aviation. Now the TRID database is a collaborative effort 
and, and it includes records from other agencies, including the ARB library. And no doubt you remember that TRID is managed by the Transportation Research Board, the TRB, of the United States. Now in TRID, you may search by keywords or you can click on Add Additional Filters. So on the left-hand side of the screen, we see the search by keyword box and just below that, also in a red circle, we see Add Additional Filters. And if you click on Additional Filters, then again, a list of field filters will open for you. Uh, again, not every field filter is displaying. I've just selected some of them. And for interest, down the bottom of the screen, you may see the field filter for languages. Now, because I don't speak German, French, or Spanish, um, I've unticked those boxes. Any records that came up in those languages would uh, not be of any use to me. And I've selected a date range of five years. But as I said, there are additional field filters, and I've just selected some there to show show for you. <clears throat> Again, I undertook a, a search in TRID and we see this at the top left of the screen and I searched on road and engineering and construction. And I have displayed just several records from that um, search result. Now, using operators, such as and or not between your keywords can assist your search. Now I have said that case doesn't matter and it doesn't for your keywords. However, these kind of combining words are capitalised. And again, when you see some records that are of interest to you, you can click on a title for the full text of the record and I've ticked three boxes there. Now in fact, when I click on a, a title, the full detail of the record will open and it um, will have a click through to the source in that detail of the record. Remembering that uh, TRID doesn't search full text, but the detail record does have a click through to the source. I mark those three boxes and then on the top right hand side of the screen you'll see that there are three marked records which I can action, for example printing, emailing, etc. <clears throat> okay, so how can we um, assist you or help with any sort of follow-up inquiries? Okay, so now wherever you are in the world, you're most welcome to contact the ARB library. And I've included the email address for the library there at the top of the screen. Now the complexity of the query and restrictions on the supply of material may impact on the level of service we can offer and whether a monetary charge will be involved or not. So don't take it that there necessarily will be, but it's just something that I need to mention. However, amongst the services we'll use to answer your inquiries, we are able to draw on our national and international connections and we'll explain how best we may be able to assist you. Now we do receive many inquiries, so in particular, please let us know if you are a CP student. <clears throat> in passing, one of the ways in which ARB monitors trends is through its weekly digest of transport related news called Making News in Transport. I have uh, included a sample entry from the Making News alert on the screen there for you. Now it's completely free and if you would like to be added to this list, you can either fill out the form on the ARB website, which is there at the bottom of the screen, 
www.arb.com.au information services making news in transport and there's a form there that you can complete and submit and we'll add you to the list or alternatively you can also email library at arb.com.au with your request. Again, uh, do you have any questions? Please send them uh, through to us. Thanks, Jill. Um, I've got a question in regards to an earlier tip that you gave about yes. um, when you wanted to email yourself one of yes. the uh, reports or yes. um, and that you suggested that sometimes depending on the size of the, the file it may be rejected by your um, yes. email server. So what would be the best way to make sure you get access to the particular item you're after? The best way to get access would be to click on the title link yep. and open and save the file that's within that detailed record. Okay, so so to download it? To download it. Yeah, terrific. Yes. All right. yes. And, and yes. does the same um, go for the TRID database, to your knowledge? The TRID database doesn't have full text records in the detail record. So therefore, when you email yourself, you will be essentially emailing the record detail, the abstract, the author, and there won't be any problem with size limits with, well, they'd have, they'd have to be very yeah. large. There yeah. won't be any problems with size limits with regard to that. But reverting briefly to the knowledge base email, you can email the detail of the record to yourself. Just untick at the bottom of the dialog box, attach files to this record. The default is that the file will be attached. So if you untick that, you can in fact email the record or yeah. records. That so you've checked. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Thank you. Thanks good. very much for that. Um, now, we, we are, uh, have a very quiet audience, so obviously you've explained everything uh, very thoroughly. I guess uh, a question for our audience is perhaps um, maybe what challenges they've had with, uh, with searching records on the uh, our library database or, or the TRID. So here's your opportunity if you've had any, any challenges in the past. Um, here's your chance to ask Jill. In the meantime, I'll just bring your attention to our next uh, ARB conference, which is uh, next year in sunny Brisbane, uh, 29th of April to the 2nd of May. So do save the date in your diaries and, um, and make sure you can get along if you can. Um, now, I'll just throw over to Andrew Meyer, who's our library manager. And um, Andrew, you might have a few special comments to add. Yes, I do. Um, I'm um, Jill's colleague and oversee the National Interest Services Program. Um, a few comments for the audience. I, I would like to stress that what you've seen today is not all that we do under National Interest Services Program. It is some of our major outputs, um, but there are plenty more that we do and Jill has touched on things like making news in transport. We also continually maintain networks internationally. She did also mention that briefly. Um, but there is much that happens under that program. Uh, there is also much that continues to happen to the ARP knowledge base and treat. So what you use now and today is not necessarily um, what you'll see in, in, a, in a month's time or a year's time. Um, both those continue to, to grow regularly. Um, the ARP knowledge base late last year recently added um, hundreds of papers from the um, Australasian Centre for um, Pavement uh, APA, um, uh, all their conference papers, uh, so we continue to identify uh, large collections and digitise them and make them globally available. TRID continues to add um, thousands of records a year. Uh, they very recently stroke a, uh, struck a deal with the um, Society of Automotive Engineering um, to make um, details of all the publications which are tens of thousands basically of their papers uh, available in TRIP. That's not the full text of the papers themselves, but you can search SAE's known output amongst uh, a whole range of other uh, uh, transportation resources if you if you use TRID. Um, so there's, there continues to be growth and there continues to be development of the interfaces as well. So what you see today there may not be how it works in a, a short amount of time. TRID very recently 
uh, updated its interface so that it was uh, specifically uh, designed for mobile devices. Uh, so it now appears um, very clearly and easily worked um, on your tablet or on your phone. Uh, so you will see changes. Um, hopefully they're uh, good user changes. You now have the details of Arb Library. If you've got queries about um, either resource, even if it is TRID, we are able to pass those on to the people involved in TRB um, and, and, and they are always happy to receive that feedback. Terrific. Thanks very much for that, Andrew. Much appreciated. We have uh, received another question from Frank, so we do have a couple more minutes if anyone would like to ask any other questions. Um, Frank's just asking, how quick uh, does it take to obtain a specific TRR publication for a CPEE student? So, Jill? Thanks, Cathy. Thanks for that question, Frank. Well, from our end, it would be uh, very quick. Uh, but in, in fact on the day, but it would possibly also depend if we had to make some international contact perhaps. We would be dependent perhaps on, on a, a, awaiting an answer from, from someone else. So I'm sorry that I can't kind of be more specific um, than that. We respond to inquiries extremely quickly, but sometimes we we are dependent on other people. Excellent. And we should specify Monday to Friday? That's, uh, yes, <laughs> Monday, Monday to Friday, Australian Eastern Standard really Time or Daylight Saving yeah. Time, yes. Excellent. Thank you, Jill. Okay, well, um, look, that's everything that we have so far. So, Jill, thank you so much for putting together this uh, very informative presentation and uh, telling everyone a little bit more about how easy it can be to access uh, what they need to access. Um, we would love for our audience to tell us what you thought of today's webinar as well as any other topics that you might like to see come your way. Um, so there are a few short questions that will uh, pop up at the end of this webinar and if you can take a moment to, to answer those that would be great. Um, Thanks very much to CPEE, Centre for Pavement Engineering Education, for helping us put today's webinar on and uh, thanks very much, Andrew.